So in today's lesson, we're going to continue our lesson on negative exponents by exposing you to a word problem that you might see. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to read through the question. Uh, carbon-14 is a radioactive element that decays to one-half or two to the negative one of its original amount every 5,700 uh, 5, years. Determine the remaining mass of 10 grams of carbon-14 after 11,400 years. So in this question, this would be a, what we call a decay question. And um, I see these types of questions in chemistry all the time, um, where we have to use mathematical models to solve real life problems. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start us off by using just a, you know, our current knowledge what, and to help you understand the problem. And then what I want to do is I want to develop a mathematical equation to model how we can utilize um, we can utilize the formula in future cases. All right. So uh, in this case, let's just try to understand the problem. So carbon fourteen we know is radioactive, and we know that after every five thousand seven hundred years, it's going to decay to half or two to the negative one of its original amount. So we want to know well how much of it will be left after. Uh, 11,400 years. So let's think about that. So first off, I know that, you know, 11,400 years divided by that half-life period of 5,700 years will give me two. And that's a nice, beautiful number that is not usually the case in most real-life problems, but it's going to help us understand how to, how to navigate this, this word problem. So what does that mean? Well, that means that, you know, if I'm starting with 10 grams of carbon-14 and I know that after one period of 5,700 years, I'm going to be left with half of what I had before. So, well, what is half of 10? Again, a nice number, 5 grams. But since I have two half-life periods, two 57,100 uh, periods going by, I know that there's going to be, you know, a second 5,700, sorry, uh, years go by. And so then after that period, well, how much of my original 10 grams is left? Well, it's decreased by yet another half of what it would have been. So it's down at this point to 2.5 grams. Right? So what does half-life means? It means that after every half-life period, you are dividing the original amount by two. In other words, you're multiplying it by a half. And we've now learned that negative, when looking at negative exponents, we can write that as a power of two to the negative one. So again, we see that here. So now I want to analyze a little bit more closely what we actually did here. In other words, how did I get from 10 grams to 2.5 grams and how can I create that a model when the a the numbers are not so pretty and b the number of half-lives are a lot um, less easy to distinguish uh, so let's do that I'm gonna just make this a little bit smaller and this as well that'll allow me to fit some of this in so really, what did I do? I took the original amount, I took that original amount of 10 grams and I multiply it by a half and then I did multiplied it by a half again. And that ended up giving me my 2.5 grams. Now I'm gonna simplify this. Again, I'm working towards developing a bit of a formula here. So 2.5 equals 10. And now I'm going to write this as one half squared. I'm going to move this up a little bit more. And then I can simplify this, you know, by including my negative exponents. Um, so I'm going to say 2.5 equals 10 times 2 to the negative 1 squared. 
So what I want to do now is I want to extend this into a situation where I can replace some of these numbers, the numbers that can change, into variables. So finally that's going to give me 2 to the power of negative 2. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do now. Um, so I'm going to replace each of these variables or each of these numbers with some variables so that we can utilize this formula in a variety of different question types. So first of all, uh, well let's talk about what this 2.5, what could we call that? Well I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call it maybe uh, the remaining amount. So let's call that, we'll use an R for remaining amount. And again, you could utilize other variables, but let's just go ahead and use that. So the remaining amount. And so in this question, what was the 10? What did the 10 represent? Um, well, the 10 represented the initial amount of my carbon-14. So I'm going to just call that maybe I for initial amount. And then I know that I have a, uh, another couple of pieces here to think about. Um, so I'm going to go back to this stage right here. Now you'll remember that we got 2, the value 2, by saying 1100, 400, 11,400 rather, and 5,700. And that gave us the 2 that we ended up with. But, you know, we're not always going to have A, this half-life, and B, this number of years. So how can we create um, a general formula for that by replacing them with variables? Well, I'm going to say, well, why don't we call this 11,400? That's like the time that's elapsed, right? And then, what, what was that 5,700? Well, that was like the half-life period. So I'm going to call that H. So now when I go down to my formula, uh, that I've already started to create. Well, I know that each half-life period is going to cause my amount to be decreased uh, by half. Now I'm going to replace this 2 by these using these variables t over h. Now I'm not quite done yet. I want this to be a little bit prettier. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and distribute this negative 1 to that exponent using my exponent laws. And rewrite. So when I when I do that, I get this nice formula. R is equal to I times 2 to the power of negative t over h. So if the numbers are not nice, which in real life, they typically are not going to be nice, beautiful numbers for you to work with then this formula will allow you to perform a similar calculation and overall it, it might be a little bit more efficient. Let's look at a second problem. Now in part B of this question, instead they're asking us to say, well, you know, how much of my carbon 14 would be left after 28,500 years? And so we could easily go about um, this problem in the way that we initially started for question A, for part A of this question. Uh, but we've created this formula, so let's put it, why not put it to use? Um, all right, so let's go. So in this question, I would say that I want to know what is going to remain, right? I want to know how much of my 10 grams is remaining after my half-life, uh, after 20, 28,500 years. So I'm going to put in, well, what is my initial amount? My initial amount is 10 grams, and I'm going to multiply that by 2, raised to the power of negative t. So t represents the time that's elapsed. So negative uh, 28,500 divided by um, my half-life period, which is 5,700. Now I should note here, and we, we haven't written it, but remember that the units here should be the same so that they cancel out, right? So I must have, I have if I have years for my time, uh, and I have years for my half-life period, then they cancel out nicely mathematically. So if they weren't in the same units, I would need to convert them so that they were. Uh, so let's work through this and see how this goes. So 10 to the power of, and now I'm just going to type this all into my calculator. So the way that I would go about this would be that I would go type in my calculator 
these two and do that division and find out what that value is. And so when I do that, I get 2 to the power of negative 5. And so then um, I'm going to use my, there should be a button that you have on your calculator, x to the y, or you might even have a button that looks like a little accent circonflex. Um, either of those will work. And when you go ahead and type that, again, remember bed mass. So you want to do this exponent part right here before you do the multiplication with the 10. So just respecting bed mass. Um, so I'm going to break that down for you just so that that's a, a good reminder for you to do that. Uh, so 10 times the value of um, 2 to the power of negative 5. which should give you 0 0.03125. And then multiplying the 10 in, I'm getting 0 0.3125 grams. And we're not going to have a conversation about significant digits. We'll save that for grade 11 chemistry and physics um, and leave grade 10 science behind. Uh, but there you have it. There is our answer using our formula. Now, again, is the formula necessary? No. But, you know, for questions where, like this one here, where there aren't a whole lot of half-lives that have gone by, it may be just as efficient for you to kind of just work through it manually. But if this value here were quite a bit larger, um, then it might be more efficient for you to utilize um, our handy-dandy formula. Um, all right, so... Um, one other thing that I need to note. Uh, some of the questions that you may see in your homework may involve um, exponential growth, in which case, instead of our initial amount increase, uh, decreasing, the initial amount will increase. Uh, so if you happen to stumble upon questions like that, either in this lesson or in the future, you know, well, how is that going to change this formula? Well, uh, instead of decaying, we're going to want the amount to grow, and so we would simply change that negative sign to a positive and go from there. Um, all right, so I hope you found today's lesson okay. I'm going to assign you a few questions to attempt and uh, that won't be identical to this, but hopefully you'll be able to transfer some of the concepts that you've learned in this lesson towards solving the new problems.